forecast first on Color 10 News, Ozarks First. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We've got a couple of clouds out there right now. Temperature sitting at 56 degrees with an east wind at about 7 miles per hour. Temperatures right now 57 in Branson, 57 in West Plains, and a little bit cooler up in Raleigh sitting at 48 degrees. Through the rest of the overnight, temperatures are going to continue to drop into the upper 40s and lower 30s, and we'll keep a couple of clouds through the morning hours. We'll start off dry tomorrow. Showers do return by tomorrow afternoon. We have a severe risk to talk about for Sunday. Good news is temperatures will get warmer, and we'll see lots of Sunshine through the middle of next week ahead of our next rainmaker. We'll talk about that in full detail coming up in a few minutes. Color 10 News at 10 starts now. And now from Color 10, breaking news. We begin with that breaking news in Aurora where a church building is on fire. This is a live look at the former First Christian Church. It's located in downtown Aurora on West Pleasant Street. The Aurora Rural Fire Protection District posted on Facebook that multiple crews are battling the flames at this old church. It sparked about 7.30 this evening and they have been on scene since. The church has actually been closed though since 2013. After being open for 142 years, and you're seeing a lot of smoke there, this is what it looked like about an hour ago. We previously reported this church closed due to declining membership, and the building was put up for sale. Our crew on the scene was told a pet company was currently operating in that building. No word on what sparked the flames, so keep with Color 10 for updates on this developing story. Another top story making news now. A new report says online sales have officially surpassed traditional brick and mortar sales. In 2018, there was a 15% jump in online sales from the previous year. That's according to the U.S. Census report. Our Madison Heaver joins us live in downtown Springfield at the Friday Art Walk. And Madison, you spoke to several people about how they buy things these days. What did they say? Yeah, Heather, most people I talked to said the reason that they are shopping online is simple. It's convenient. But one local business owner I talked to also said that while that trend may be affecting her, physical stores offer more than just accessibility. Cricket Freeze, who owns a cricket in the house, says for brick and mortars, it's all about the experience, not the sales. You know, we, we try to get to know them and talk to them about what their needs are. So you have to. I think that's, that's where... Uh, a brick and mortar is going to be will be a benefit over um, any, anything online. Because of that experience, Free says she doesn't sell any of her goods online. I want to be sitting at a computer posting things when my customers are coming in. Over at the First Friday Art Walk in downtown Springfield, some people say they enjoy shopping in stores. I think that that's the only way you can really get the integrity of the item. You know, if you don't really get a chance to feel it and see exactly what it's like. You don't know what kind of quality you're going to get. So then if you buy it online, you might get it, you might not. Am I going to be home? Do I have to wait for the FedEx guy? But some other people say they'd rather shop online. I think most of the stuff I buy is online. I have Amazon, like the app on my phone. I have Zappos on my phone. I don't like going around with, like, where there's, like, a lot of people. I like to, like, take my time. And, like, sometimes it's, like, you feel pressured or, like, there's, if there's sales people, like, at Nordstrom, I'm just, like, I'd rather just take a picture of it and order it later. Freeze says even though she enjoys the personal aspect of people visiting her store, if the trend of online shopping continues, she'll have to grow with it. Maybe down the road we may have to. That, that may be what you know our only option. If people aren't walking in the door, then you'll have to just join the crowd. But I think that'll be a sad day when all the businesses have to suddenly turn to their computers. Now, people I talked to also said that a difference in generation could contribute to those online sales surging. In downtown Springfield, Madison Heaver, Ozarks First. All right, Madison, thanks. Following up now to a story we told you about earlier today. An Amber Alert has been canceled after two missing children are found safe. St. Charles police say the one and three year olds were found in Fairmont City, Illinois. Their biological father is accused of assaulting their mother, then taking the kids. Police are still searching. For Fernando Morez. Happening around the region, a change to voting right laws in Arkansas. Minors in prison will soon get voting rights restored after they serve their sentence. The Senate bill is on the way to Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson's desk right now. It affects people who committed a crime as a minor but are convicted as adults. It allows kids serving lifetime parole to be discharged after five years, and it requires the Department of Corrections to give kids access to the same educational resources adults get. 
Another big change, it gives all formerly incarcerated children the right to vote after they finish their sentence and parole. State Senator Greg Letting, a Democrat, explains why he supports this change. I understand uh, why sometimes people might feel that if you did a crime, uh, you shouldn't necessarily have your right to vote restored. But we're talking about people who uh, committed these crimes as minors. They did their time. There's no reason whatsoever that these people shouldn't be able to vote. Right now, Arkansas law states that formerly convicted adults can already reinstate their voting rights after their sentence and parole is complete. This bill removes barriers that formerly applied to minors convicted as adults. Scoring a 10 with us tonight, the 116-year-old footbridge at Jefferson and Commercial Street is now fully funded to be restored. The Commercial Club of Springfield announced it reached its fundraising goal of $50,000. The Jefferson Avenue footbridge closed in March of 2016 after an inspection uncovered problematic areas that could have posed a danger if used. A news conference will be held tomorrow to talk about the future plans for reopening this historic footbridge. Tattoo artists from all over America are here in Springfield this weekend for the Queen City Carnival of Ink. 140 tattoo artists are filling the Springfield Expo Center to show off their skills and enter to win a variety of tattoo contests. Photojournalist Eric Voss was there today to see what it was all about. You know, you see people with tattoos and they and they're, seem like they're pretty interesting people. This event is uh, the Queen City Carnival of Ink, which the Carnival of Ink is a touring tattoo convention, um, and the Queen City is one of the locations that we attend. I love the diversity of everything going on, and it's, it's really cool to see all these guys come together and show off their artwork. It's really America's last form of individuality. I mean, it's the one way you can handpick and make yourself different from everybody else. So I'm getting a train. I have a disabled nine-year-old son, and he's obsessed with trains. So um, I talked to Mickey and he said that he could do it. I'm getting his name in the smoke of the train. We have uh, artists from all over the U.S. We have uh, like Judy Parker from San Diego, California. Uh, we have some artists from Florida, uh, some from Detroit. It has become so mainstream in the past 10 years. Um, you know, it used to be pretty taboo, but it's a lot more socially acceptable now. Not necessarily a fad, but uh, something that's going to stick around. You see somebody with a very nice tattoo or something that's very, very art artistic on their body, and you kind of want to ask questions rather than just walking up and ask somebody, hey, how are you? And just be like, man, that's that's incredible piece. Where did you get that done at? They're addictive. Tattoos are addictive. Everybody's scared to get that first one, but once they get that first one, they get the bug. They just want to get more and more and more, and then here you here they all are. For me, men, they're forever. The event runs from noon to 10 tomorrow night and noon until 8 p.m. on Sunday. Opening tonight at the Springfield Art Museum, a special exhibit from a major name in modern art. Nick Cave's Sound Suite series is now on display. Cave is actually a Missouri native, originally from Fulton. He's also a musician and dance performer. His work has been featured all around the world. Leaders at the Springfield Art Museum say Cave is one of the biggest names to come to town in more than a decade. Here's what you can expect to see at this exhibit. So they're sculptures, but they're based on the human form, so they're on mannequins. They're made of buttons and toys and yarn and afghans, and although they're really wild and colorful and loud, they're also sort of based on more serious issues. Um, he made them after the Rodney King beatings in the 1990s when he was sort of thinking about himself as an African-American man in this country and thinking of a way he could protect himself. The sound suit exhibit will be available to see until July 28th. The art museum is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 6 and on Sunday from 1 to 5. Coming up this weekend, a free service to help keep your identity safe. The Better Business Bureau's annual Shred Day is tomorrow morning at the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds. This event starts at 8 and lasts until 11.30. And you'll be able to drive up to several big trucks, have old documents with personal information shredded on site. You can also take a variety of electronics, too, like phones and computers, even credit cards. But no TVs or monitors. There's also a limit of three boxes per vehicle. 
So this is a great size box, or just maybe a little bit bigger with different dimensions would be acceptable to us. We are going to give you the box back because we cannot shred cardboard boxes. We are not going to be accepting, for example, I had a call today about uh, garbage bags that you use outside. By the way, the location has also changed this year. This is drone video taken last year, and as you can see, traffic from the cars line was a bit of a headache there. This year, you'll head to Gate 10 on Zoo Park Road across from Hillcrest High School. The plan is for cars to wind around the ground so the line doesn't spill into the street. Also, you are asked to not line up at the gate early. Switching to weather, Beth, are we expecting showers tonight, or is the storm activity later in the weekend? Looks like we're going to actually have two rounds of showers and storms. The first one will come Saturday into Sunday morning, and then another one that will come Sunday into early Monday morning. We've got severe weather risks with both of those rounds to talk about right after the break. weather with meteorologist Beth Finello. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Yesterday, temperatures only made it into the upper 50s and lower 60s, a high of 61 here in Springfield yesterday. Today, we had more sunshine and temperatures warmed up to about 66. Here in Springfield, we actually hit 74 down in Fayetteville and in Bentonville, Arkansas. Up in Rolla, temperatures only made it into the lower 50s, a high of 54 in Rolla because they did not clear out the clouds as fast and see as much sunshine. Temperatures right now at 57 in West Plains, 48 up in Rolla, and 56. Here in Springfield, we're about five to ten degrees warmer than we were at this time yesterday. Our radar is quiet. We've just got a couple of clouds right now, and that is ahead of our next two systems that are going to come in this weekend. The one over the Four Corners and the Texas Panhandle will make its way into the Ozarks for Saturday, and the one off the coast will make its way into the Ozarks for Sunday. So here's how all of this is going to play out. The first piece of the weekend storm will come in Saturday afternoon and the evening into the overnight hours. The second piece of the weekend storm will come in Sunday afternoon and evening and into the early or early hours of Monday morning. There is a severe weather chance with both of these systems. Saturday, the severe weather risk mainly along and south of the state line. And with these storms, the only risk is some large hail. 
The better severe weather chance is going to be on Sunday, more widespread severe weather along and south of I-44, really. And with these storms, the main risk is going to be large hail and damaging wind gusts up to about 60 miles per hour. So let's time all this out for you. Through the overnight, we're going to keep a couple of clouds, temperatures in the upper 40s and lower 50s. We'll start off the day dry. Now, notice as these storms make their way through the Ozarks to the north and east, they do start to die down. We'll see a couple of showers through the overnight, and we'll start Sunday. Day off quiet with some sunny conditions, partly sunny conditions, and temperatures in the upper 60s and lower 70s. And then we'll have another round of severe weather making its way through during the evening and overnight hours. Our main threats again are large hail up to a quarter size, gusty winds up to 60 miles per hour, and localized flooding. So here's what you could expect again showers arriving late Saturday that linger into Sunday morning. An isolated severe hail chance possible for Saturday afternoon, mainly along and south of the state line. Our healthier chance, our better chance for severe weather will. Will be on Sunday with the primary threats of damaging winds and large hail. Overnight tonight, temperatures dropping into the upper 40s and lower 50s with just a couple of clouds. Tomorrow, if you're wanting to go golfing, I suggest doing it in the morning hours. We'll have temperatures in the middle 50s by 8, in the middle 60s by lunchtime, and we'll hit our highs in the upper 60s and lower 70s by the afternoon ahead of our showers that will come in later in the evening. Good news is, after all the showers and storms move out, We'll have clearing skies on Monday, warm and breezy conditions Tuesday and Wednesday, and those breezy conditions are going to come out of the south, bringing in some warm and moist air, so we'll be a little bit humid, but temperatures will be back up in the middle and upper 70s, and maybe a couple 80 readings ahead of our next shower chance that'll bring in some cooler temperatures for the end of the week. That'll be about the first time we pop to 80. I'm excited. Year, huh? I'm so excited. I yeah. love warm weather. <laughs> it's exciting. What's our viewers club number tonight? The number tonight is 151772, and our jackpot's at $500. All right, Beth, thank you. And still ahead, we're going to take you back out to a live look at that old historic church fire in downtown Aurora. Plus, the system is full, and when it's full, there's nothing you can do. You have to say, I'm sorry, we can't take you. President Trump tours the southern border and doubles down on his demands of Mexico.
to get back to a breaking news story we are following for you tonight in Aurora. This is the fir former First Christian Church in downtown Aurora, and it is currently on fire. Now, we want to say that this is the former church. It was open for about 142 years before it closed in 2013 due to declining membership. Color 10 actually did a story on it when it closed back in 2013. Right now, we know that about 7.30 this evening, Sparks caught fire and fire crews were called to the scene. Now we know about three agencies are currently working this fire. They've been out there now for about three hours. And we also know that this building was put up for sale and our crews on scene have been told that a pet company was operating in this building right now. Now no word on if anyone was inside at the time that this flame sparked or what actually sparked the flames tonight. Our crews, of course, have been out there, and as you can imagine, the fire crews are very, very busy trying to put out the flames still tonight. So we are working to get more information for this on you, but we want to let you know that this former First Christian Church in downtown Aurora is still burning tonight. We'll follow updates on OzarksFirst.com. And turning to political coverage now, President Trump met with immigration agents at a border city in California today. He repeated his contention that there is a crisis along the southern border and said again he could end up shutting it. Here's Mola Lange with more. So behind us is the wall. President Trump toured a two mile stretch of fence along the southern border in California Friday. The section is a long planned replacement for an older barrier in Calexico. It looks great. It's better and much more effective than the previous wall. In a discussion earlier with border officials, the president was told agents cannot handle the recent flood of migrants coming through Mexico from El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. His response The system is full. And when it's full, there's nothing you can do. You have to say, I'm sorry, we can't take you. This week, President Trump appeared to back off his threat to immediately shut down the southern border to stem the flow of migrants. But he warned again Friday he could still close the border or slap trade tariffs on Mexico. We're going to shut it down if we have to. We're going to tariff the cars coming in that they make in Mexico if we have to. Uh, but Mexico has been doing a great job. The president praised Mexico for making progress over the past few days. Mexico's foreign secretary said, however, there has not been a very substantive change in the country's interception and detention of migrants. There is indeed a, an emergency on our southern border. It's been loud and clear. Democratic members of Congress also visited the border in El Paso, Texas. What I saw today was nothing more, nothing less than a humanitarian crisis that has been created by a policy this administration put into place. At the fence in Calexico, a plaque reads, this is the first section of President Trump's border wall. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, the White House. 20 states, including California, are suing President Trump over his emergency declaration to divert Defense Department money and other earmarked funds to pay for his border wall. It's the home opener at Bush Stadium. Dan Lucy's coming up in sports with highlights and a Kelly Harper update next.
Recapping our top story tonight as we continue to follow this breaking news. This is the former First Christian Church in downtown Aurora. Fire crews have been on the scene since about 7.30 this evening. And as you can see, about three hours later, they are still battling the flames trying to put out this fire. The Aurora Fire Protection District did post on Facebook that multiple crews are out there at this old historic church. This church has actually been closed since 2013 after being open for 142 years. Uh, we know that a pet company was now operating in that building. No word on what sparked the flames or if anyone was hurt. So continue to follow those updates on Ozarks First. Dot com. A quick check of our forecast shows us some storms. Yeah, we've got storms for Saturday. We've got storms for Sunday. Good news is warmer and sunnier conditions for the middle of next week. All right, that'll do it for us here at 10. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow night.